Hello everyone. Good to see you online and uh, this week we continue our discussion about agentic AI. And uh, to take you through that journey, I want to start by asking you to imagine a future. Okay, so put your imagination cap on. And I want you to imagine that I'm going to offer you an MBA graduate, very talented MBA graduate from a leading university that you can add to your team. Think of that. So I'm giving you an MBA graduate. Usually these MBA graduates um, have a starting salary between 100,000 to 200,000, depending on where they, you know, they graduated from. So 100 to 200,000 US dollars per year would be their starting salary. Imagine that I'm giving you that graduate for you to use in your business in whatever capacity you think they could be beneficial for you. What would that be? Now, on top of that, actually, this individual I'm giving you is actually really very, very talented. They also have a PhD in interdisciplinary science. So they've got you know different kinds of science expertise that they have in addition to their MBA. So they have a PhD in that. They also have a PhD in philosophy. I mean, an amazing talent. I'm just giving this talent to you. Someone who has great business skills and has an MBA is also, you know, uh, very well versed in different kinds of sciences and philosophy and languages, all of that. So, you know, if I provide you with that resource, where would you use them in your business? Think about that. Where would you find the most value? Can they help you in doing your policies, procedures in a more efficient way? Can they help you with your go-to-market strategy to sell your products and services better? Can they help you in actually improving overall your strategy? Um, can they reduce your costs by you know, providing less uh, operational headaches and make the operations streamlined better? Where would you use them in your business? That's the question for you to think about. So that resource is now available to you, but I'm going to give you even something better. Instead of one resource, imagine I'm going to give you a hundred of these graduates. How would you use these hundred graduates in your business. Think of that. Millions of dollars worth of talent available to you for your business. Imagine what you could do. The sky should be the limit. Yeah. So let's bring you back to reality, back to today. We'll fast forward back to today. And actually today, you do have access to the AI agents that actually play the same role I was explaining earlier. These AI agents are as good as MBA graduates. They have different kinds of science skills, language skills. They've read all of the history and all of the books that have been written by us over centuries. That it's in their knowledge base. And you have access to these hundreds of agents today, ready for you to make use of them. How will you use them? That's the question. Again, this is not now imagination, this is reality. This year is going to be the year of AI agents and we've already started using them across many, many different kinds of use cases. And just to recap, what are AI agents? So AI agents are able to understand various needs through normal languages. So you don't need special coding skills. You don't need to develop them. You can talk to them in a normal way and they'll be able to understand. They will be able to plan based on their reasoning and 
you know, what their, the, the data that they have around them to plan and then act on their planning to achieve the objectives you've given them. And it doesn't just stop there. It's not like a static thing. They actually learn from each of these engagements so that every time they're improving and doing their job better and better and better. So that's what an AI agent does. And this has become available this year and you know usable because what has happened over the past couple of months, over the past 24, 36 months, is that AI models have become really advanced. They've gone from just text to visuals, to sound, to science and to reasoning. And all these capabilities of the, agent, the uh, AI models can be accessed by these AI agents. So AI agents, allow you to take your collective intelligence in the organization and scale it to a whole new dimension. Think about that, going back to our analogy in the beginning. Imagine that you have a hundred of these really talented graduates who are working in your organization and helping you take it to the next level. You have that access today. And the good thing about these agents, they don't need any desks. They could work you know, all the time, 24 by seven, um, they have limited requirements and needs. All you need to do is just know how to capitalize on them, how to make use of them. So let's take some scenario that explains it. So you've got your business today, your business, people engage with your business through either directly coming to your physical presence or through your website or through your phone. And imagine now what you could do is you add an AI agent to interface with them. And who are the people that are interfacing with you? Usually your external stakeholders, people like your clients, uh, the community that is working, you know, you're working in, so you're operating in a certain country, the people in that country, they're your external stakeholders, your customers, of course, they could call on the phone, they could interact through the web, they could come and visit your stores. Imagine now you have this set of collective intelligence that is able to communicate with your external stakeholders in a more efficient, effective way. But it doesn't stop there. You also have your internal stakeholders, people like your employees, your, you know, your staff, your suppliers, people that help you with your operation. Also, these stakeholders can benefit dramatically from having an AI intelligence working with them. So your, em your employees can have access to a knowledge base for any question that they have. If you're launching a new product, you could have an AI agent that actually acts as a primary go-to for any questions on that product, helps the your employees uh, do role play so that they practice engaging with their, you know, with customers on that product, help the employees answer any questions they have technical or otherwise on that product. Um, so any kind of internal process can be improved, enhanced by also having these AI agents inside. So as you deploy the AI agents in one touch point or one process and you expand from there on, with time, this collective intelligence becomes really powerful, taking your whole business to a totally different dimension. And the best thing about it is as you engage your external and internal stakeholders, is that the agents will be able to understand your users' unique needs and interact with them in their preferred channel, depending on the way that they want to interact. So if someone comes as a customer of yours and likes to use text, but not phone calls, your AI agent is aware of that, is engaging with them through the text, giving them all the information that they need over there. If another customer interacts through the voice, by, through a phone call, the agents will also interact with them in the same way um, that they prefer. And the collective intelligence of these agents, the intelligence of your organization is summarized through these agents. So your 
unique the unique needs of your stakeholders can then be addressed you could imagine this is really what we're calling hyper personalization because you could zoom into each specific persona each you know uh, person that interacts with you def you know interact with them in a way that has the most impact on their needs and uh, what they like so this is hyper personalization not as we have today where we're basically we create these buckets on you know for different groups of people and they need to all interface in a certain way in a certain workflow it takes us a long time to develop these workflows it takes us a long time to deliver them and at the end we're not really delivering the optimal workflows but with these ai agents we can do hyper personalization and we have hyper intelligence collectively across the organization through the use of these different agents working together so that's what's happening now so this is not like in the future today that we're deploying this in organizations uh, companies are slowly rolling this out across their organizations and it might seem overwhelming as a start because you don't know where to start or how to go or which process shall i focus on so i'm going to suggest for you the best way forward to start making use of ai agents and this is something now we're like rolling out in the hundreds of applications across different you know, hundreds of customers two main um, ways to think about it one is start to deploy interactive chatbots these could be included on your website um, so every website can have an intelligent chatbot that uh, your users visiting the website can interact with the chatbot can serve as customer service but at the same time it can serve as a sales rep upselling uh, explaining the products and services so as an example we're doing this in some banks where they have many different card credit card product products credit cards prepaid cards etc it's confusing for the customer to know what is the best card for them but if they interact with a, an ai agent that actually probes them understands their needs that AI agent would be really good at recommending the best product for them, the best card for them based on their needs. If they travel a lot or if they use it for business expenses or whatever, it could give them the best um, solution. And this kind of bot, you can see here the link if you want to try, you can do a free trial on our website on this link. This bot can be set up in minutes. You could just train it with a website link to either your whole website or to a specific product set that you're doing. And then you deploy it in minutes and it's available to answer uh, user questions. So this is a great way to get started with AI agents. Now, at that level, when it's just a standalone uh, AI agent on your website, it's not completely active as an AI agent. It's not taking actions it's just recommending products going back and forth but you can then take it to the next level and have it integrate with systems where it could sign up people um, it could uh, you know sell the products and services directly um, if you're using it for customer support you could link it to your systems and you could actually answer questions but as a start you could start in minutes by just having that bot aware of your products or services on your website and ready to answer customer calls so that's a great way um, and you know people can engage with this these same chatbots can also be used internally we said you have two stakeholders the external stakeholders and the internal stakeholders so instead of just having the chatbot sit on your website serve your external stakeholders similarly you can create chatbots internally for your teams and have them trained on the knowledge base you have inside the organization um, supporting your teams so that's a very quick way that can be up and running and these bots allow since they work with text they allow the users to upload documents to them to form you know part of the, the discussion so when you're using them internally you could use chatbots to help in proposals that are being done and the salespeople in your teams can upload a proposal and the chatbot could work with them on improving the proposal um, so it allows you to upload documents, allows you to uh, upload images, uh, and that's the benefit of these chat ba chatbots, basically. The next level of bots are voice bots, voice agents. 
Similarly, these can also be set up in minutes for a basic version trained on general information from your website, etc. And they can either uh, be extended from there to act as call center agents. They could be inbound or outbound, meaning that you could be receiving calls, you know, and connecting it to your telephone line. So you can receive calls when the AI agent answers those calls, works with the um, users who are calling on their needs, or you could have them being acting as outbound where they do outbound calls for example for sales or collections as you saw in rachel's graph there are many use cases that are being used at the moment with these ai agents um, they work perfectly in english uh, and many other languages arabic as well um, of course other languages like french etc most common languages in the world are now handled through these ai agents in a really good way uh, and they're very powerful, very easy to set up. So you could imagine even in a call center, they could reduce a lot of costs because they could handle the first level of support and then keep the human agents to handle the more difficult levels of support um, or sales, depending on the use case. So these are really easy to set up, very cost effective, quickly can be deployed and add value. If you have a call center, they could reduce a lot of the cost of the call center. And if you don't have a call center and you weren't able to get one before because you couldn't afford it, because these were expensive systems, now anyone can deploy the you know uh, 24 by 7 AI agent on their website for their customers to interact with. And if you want to give it a try, you could try on this link as well to set up a, a really simple free version just to get comfortable with it. That's the key at this stage. At this stage, it's really important that you experiment with AI, you try them out, you try them in their use cases, and you know the returns for companies that are leading the AI wave are immense. There's a lot of value that would, you'd get across many different metrics, as you can see from this you know, summary of, uh, from a BCG um, report that recently came out. So that's it from my side. I encourage you to experiment, play around, try these AI agents, and I'm going to pass it back to Emma so that she could take you through a few demos of AI agents in action, uh, and we'll take it from there. That's it from my side. I'll see you next week.